In preparation for turning the saucer shape of the vessel, the blank is mounted between centers. For this size blank, a large drive spur is used for added security. To assist me in positioning the wood on the lathe, an automotive jack is used as a third hand. Once the blank is between centers, the jack is lowered and the piece is checked for balance. Although the sanding can be done on the lathe, a carving stand provides greater access to hard to reach places. A wide array of tools can be used to contour and smooth the piece. The angle grinder and a carving wheel with tungsten carbide teeth make fast work of contouring the ribs. Mark the initial rib for reference. Trap system is used. This one consists of a secondary support gate, a D-handled tool holder, a boring bar, and a custom laser guidance system. The hollowing is performed in incremental steps, so that the portion being hollowed is supported by solid material behind it. After the central zone is hollowed, each subsequent zone is brought to its final wall thickness before proceeding on to the next. The shape of the hollowing tools and the size of the entrance hole define the inner cavity of the piece. Here's two cutters that work really excellent. Um, most fellas have a common Dremel tool around the shop. It uh, gives you a good high RPM. Your bit size, you cannot go as large, but it, it's really great for detail work. You can s still hook your cable up to it, give you the same spiraling effects. So th this is a very versatile tool. This is a die grinder, uh, pneumatic out of air, and uh, it, this will hold any bit you want to put in, any type of router bit, and it, it's just another versatility. If, for example, we want a spiral to rotate half a revolution, around a 10 inch cylinder. Then the spool diameter is calculated by dividing the length of travel, 10 inches, by pi times one half revolution. So the spool diameter is a little over six inches. I'll demonstrate the relationship between spool circumference and tool travel by using a colored pencil to draw a spiral as the lathe spindle is rotated. Turning the spindle causes the cylinder to rotate and the sled to move laterally. The combination of these two motions results in a spiral drawn on the surface of the cylinder. The grooves on this piece have a one inch radius, so it's time to pull out the angle grinder equipped with the two inch carbide cutter. At this stage in the process, you can vary the contact angle of the cutting tool to achieve the design that you have in mind. Once the grooves in the bottom are complete, I'm ready to cut the grooves into the top. The tenon is removed. Now that all the spirals are drawn, it's time to remove the pencil and replace it with a router. As you can see from this comparison, the guides on both fixtures are in the same position. Tough, but workable. The wood I prefer for my open spiral turnings is ash, and in my area, the ash trees have been devastated by the emerald ash borer. These insects eat the sugary inner bark and starve the tree. The wood left behind is unaffected and is perfect for these open spiral turnings. The piece I'll be making is approximately 14 inches in diameter and 8 inches tall. A blank that size weighs approximately 80 pounds. Notice the rubber band around the spool. It acts to increase the friction between the cable and the wooden spool, keeping the cable from slipping during operation. In this configuration, 
The minimum diameter of the spool is limited by the size of the chuck. On the outboard side, the chuck is no longer a factor in determining the size of the spool. A 3 8 inch threaded rod holds the indexing plate tightly against the lathe's hand wheel. A piece of neoprene rubber keeps the two from slipping. The rod is inserted through the spindle and is held in place on the inboard side with a T-nut. You do all this turning, you want to get the best cut you can so that you minimize how much tear out you get, you minimize the tool marks, so you can reduce the amount of sanding you do. My shop is in the basement, which means there's dust in the house. So whatever I can do in terms of getting a clean cut, I reduce the amount of sawdust in the house and I reduce the amount of dissatisfaction I get from my wife. I like to create the tenon early in the process, so if the piece should get knocked off by a catch, I'll have a way to remount it on the lathe. With the first surface roughed out and the tenons complete, I'll resume rounding the piece using push cuts from the tailstock side. As the hollowing proceeds through the shoulder, Frequent adjustments are made to the laser offset direction. One of the best attributes of this type of laser guide is that it can be adjusted without removing the boring bar from the turning. The rib uniformity is readily apparent by viewing through the open spirals. Each time the lathe is stopped for a shaving break, the ribs are inspected for any damage that might lead to a quick disintegration when the lathe is started back up. During this program, Jeff has demonstrated the cable-driven spiral system in action in three different applications. The fluted spiral, the mirrored interlocking spiral platter, and the open spiral. Sir Helix himself has shown how cable routing maximizes controlled but flexible tool movement. Yes, it is labor, the rebirth of the fallen, carefully chosen, chopped, shaved inside out, deepest nature ultimately spiraling open. Chainsaw in hand, Jeff has selected the raw material, prepared the blanks, and mounted them for turning. First, he attacked the pieces with aggressive push cuts, proceeding to the precise surgery to bring the profile into its final shape. The most exciting application of the cable-driven spiral system is in the world of open spirals. An open spiral is when the spiral is cut through from the outside to the inside. You can actually see through the vessel. The only thing retaining the shape are the ribs left behind once the process is complete.